here with this little Ace Magic mini PC. I'll show you the I.O. on the back real fast. I've tried some of these before on my second channel from another brand. Somewhat impressed. This one uh, seems pretty much the same, but we'll go ahead and take a look. It's doing its last updates right now, but yeah, let's uh, let's dive into this. While we're waiting for that update to finish, I will note this is pretty slow. It's, it's not got the greatest processor in the world, so keep that in mind. But it is an affordable and compact little uh, mini PC. You know, it's 3.9 by 3.9 by 1.3 inches. You can mount it to the back of the monitor if you wanted. It's got the 12th generation Intel Outer Lake N97, the max boost of 3.6 gigahertz. A little bit more powerful than the other one I had, I think. This one specifically has eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, 256 gigabyte SSD. Not the best RAM in the world, not the best SSD in the world, but for like light office work or just, you know, screwing around, works pretty good. This does actually have upgradable storage. You can pop that um, M2 NVMe out of there. And it's also got a M2 SATA that you can put up to two terabytes in, I think. Doesn't have a whole lot of ports, but it does have gigabit ethernet, HDMI, display port, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 and two USB 2.0s, and a three and a half millimeter uh, headphone jack, which is on the front. I, I will say I wish I this had USB-C, it does not. It's 2025, everything should have USB-C. Pretty quiet, a uh, little fan in there. Nothing, nothing too impressive, but it's never gonna get that hot anyway. And I'm just using it here on this little monitor that I've previously done a video on on my other channel. Nice little thing for testing these. I'm actually gonna use this for an RPI 5 soon. So watch for that video. It does come with an HDMI cable. Um, it's not the longest thing in the world, but it works, especially if you're mounting this on the back of a monitor. It has that uh, VESA mount that comes with it. And at eight gigabytes of RAM, it is kind of limited for heavy tasks. Like that wouldn't even comfortably handle the amount of tabs I keep open. I'm not the intended user of this. Um, this is more like a little project thing that I might use for some stuff. This is 12 volt, so I can run this off my, you know, batteries that I use for amateur radio. So that's kind of nice. Who's gonna buy this? You know, if you just want something real light that you're gonna do some web browsing on, maybe watch a little video. You're not really gonna game on this. Once this update is done, I will put Minecraft on here and we'll test Minecraft. You could probably do some emulation on here pretty well. Let's let this finish updating. Um, this is like several minutes in now and it took, I don't know, like an hour for it to download and unpack the latest Windows update, and that's after having done three other rounds of updates. Well, I'm speaking about slowness. When you do get this, don't expect to use it right away. It did take about a half hour for it to just get through everything and set up Windows for the first time. Downloading and installing Minecraft took, I don't know, about 10 minutes. So let's go ahead and play a little Minecraft here. While this does download, see it's been a minute and it's only moved a few megabytes. I, I don't think the Wi-Fi radio in this is very good, or maybe the antenna is just not in a good place or is effectively non-existent. You may want to use this wired. We're still waiting, but I thought of something else I wanted to mention. By default, these things have the audio at 100%. I'm not sure why. <laughs> it, it was a pretty big shock when sound first came out, and I was like, whew, fortunately we only have the tiny speaker in this thing, because it was set to, 99 I guess but uh you know I've turned it way down to like 22 so we should not blow anyone's eardrums keep in mind that and now it's doing another download dang come on Minecraft if you could spend a little bit more I know they do have another one I'm actually I have one of those coming it's got a graphics card and stuff in it so that'll be up on the channel soon too if it's not already when you're watching this that one I expect a lot more from but yeah, it looks like Minecraft is gonna go ahead and launch, so I'm going to start to download on that again. Yeah, see, it's pulling like 12 megabits per second in Steam. Let me go turn the light off so you can see the screen a little bit better. That's a little better, not a lot, but we're gonna do single player. We'll go ahead and do a creative world, create a new world. This could take it uh, a little bit of time. Ah, it's going pretty fast. All right, let's go ahead and make it full screen. Yeah, it's a little choppy. Let's go ahead and open our inventory here. Let me get some torches here, and then we'll go ahead and get 
Uh, some lava. I'm trying to find a good place for my mouse here. There we go. So let's... Oh wow, started us by a ton of turtles. I mean, it's not bad. Uh, it's a little laggy when you enter a new new segment of the map. Man, there's a lot of turtles over here. But, like, that's really hard for you to see, isn't it? Get some light going over here. Yeah, I mean, you could play Minecraft anyway. Well, I even cranked brightness to max in-game, and it didn't make much of a difference. That's unfortunate. But, yeah, I mean, you could figure that out. Weird playing it at this angle. There we go. Let's mess around down here for a second. Yeah, like you can get pretty crazy here. I I could totally play Minecraft like this. This is playing it a little bit better than my uh, M1 MacBook Pro. Let's see how Quake is doing. Quake is ready. There we go, I got the brightness cranked up all the way so we can see what we're doing. It's playing Quake fine, but I mean, this is a really old game. Uh, they kind of re-released this in Steam a little bit ago. Yeah, I mean, it handles older games just fine in, in lower demand games like Minecraft. Obviously, you could crank up settings in Minecraft and make it harder for it to run, but you could totally just use this for vintage gaming as long as something's like in Steam and is going to work with Windows 11. So let me go ahead and pause the video here. I will try to install Mint and see if we have any resolution issues with the um, Intel graphics. I did on that previous one, I could not find drivers. So fingers crossed. I, I will say I'm pretty happy. Um, normally getting into the BIOS on these things is hard. I hit delete, it just went straight into it. I, I had another one where I had to go in and do some command line stuff in Windows just to be able to get into the BIOS because it had like a one second timeout and by the time it appeared it was already too late this one looked like i had about a five second so pretty cool so we'll go ahead and open the mint installer here and we're just going to dual boot it here alongside with windows boot manager like i'm not going to use that 50 gigabytes but whatever 49 and a half good enough same time zone anyway all right so we've given it a password it's copying the files it looks like all in, it's going to take about eight or nine minutes total to install Mint. Um, not bad. Not bad at all. Not the greatest, but completely reasonable. So you may want to switch from Windows from this to your Linux of choice. Um, Mint is pretty, pretty good for people that haven't really used Linux before. Let me remove this thumb drive. Well, I should have left that in until the... Uh... <laughs> Installer was done. So yeah, you may want to install like your Linux of choice. Mint's a pretty good option if you're new to Windows. Um, you might be able to squeeze a little bit more performance out without the bloat of Windows. That's up to you. Well, so it's set Windows as the default. Okay, we're in the BIOS again. Poke around in here for a second. So yeah, I did see the outer lake. Uh, Well, Mint Linux is going to work on this. I messed up in the installer there when I removed the thumb drive too early, so it didn't put the bootloader in right. But you saw it working pretty fine there off the thumb drive, so clearly it's going to work. Sorry about that. Um, I just I don't want to see her for another 10 minutes. So, yeah, this thing's all right. Again, if you just want something simple, you want something you can throw on the back of a monitor, or if you're an amateur radio operator and you want something you can take into the field and run off your batteries, this will run off 12 volt. And you can pick up a little monitor like this that runs off of uh, AC, but I think you can also run that off USB. But they do have 12 volt ones of these and they have USB powered ones of these. So yeah, it's probably all what I'll use it for. Might go in one of my battery boxes that has enough room for one of these monitors and then you know, 
take a little uh, keyboard and mouse or whatever if I want to do activations or something instead of having to lug a laptop around or so I can have you know the laptop and it that way I can take like my MacBook which doesn't always have all of the amateur radio software I want but Windows does and yeah I mean you could also do this with like an RPI or something but if you had an RPI 5 it would compete pretty well with this you'd have to emulate Windows so you couldn't want to run it natively but if you're going to run Linux I, I might just go with like an RPI but if you need Windows, these things do serve a purpose, and they're pretty cheap. I think it was like 170 bucks or something. Those prices will vary, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.